Hey everybody, this is Franco, and I am making this video in response to a question that I am often asked, is it better to build your own CNC milling machine or is it better to buy a CNC milling machine? So here we go. Should you DIY or should you buy? So before you begin any project, before you do anything, you should always begin with the end in mind. You want to think about what you really need. So yes, it is fun to make stuff. Making stuff is great. I love making stuff. It's, it's great to use the creative part of your brain, but it is easy to overspend, not just in terms of money, but also in terms of your time. So you need to think about those things. Before you build your machine or before you build anything, make sure you know what you want in a CNC machine. Make sure you really understand what your needs are and your constraints in terms of uh, time and money. What are your needs? So if you are a hobbyist who wants a CNC machine to, to help build your projects, okay, cool. Uh, maybe you own a small business with an occasional need for CNC machine parts. That's cool too. If you're in one of these two groups, you're probably a great candidate for a DIY CNC machine. Uh, but if you need to make a lot of precision components really fast, you probably are not a good candidate for a DIY CNC machine. You're probably not a good candidate for a, uh, an inexpensive home built, or I'm sorry, an inexpensive factory built CNC machine. What you probably need to do is spend a lot more money and buy a, you know, industrial grade CNC milling machine. Um, so what are your needs? You're not going to be able to buy a $1,200 milling machine, automate it, and then go start a machine shop and make a living. You're just not going to be able to do that. But you definitely can take a DIY CNC machine and uh, do really cool stuff with it in your garage and basement, make a lot of really nice parts, um, really you know, enhance your projects. Uh, you, you definitely can do pretty amazing things with a DIY machine, but just you know, don't have it in your head that you're going to be able to start a machine shop uh, with a home-built machine. Know your options. So building your own CNC milling machine may definitely be the right thing for you to do, but it's always good to know how much a factory made CNC machine, CNC mill costs before you start. So depending on your needs, you know, you may decide it's better to buy than it is to build. So I have two comparisons. I try to get two uh, options here. So here's the baseline for DIY. This is the Precision Matthews PM25 MV milling machine. And as you can see from the slide, you know, has, you know, fairly generous travels in X, Y, and Z. Uh, has what I would say is very typical uh, spindle for machines like this, 2250 RPM, 750 watts. Runs off 110 volt single phase. You can buy this machine for, you know, around $1,600. I chose this machine because it's not the most expensive option for a DIY. It's not the cheapest machine you can buy. It's kind of right in the middle. And it's very similar to the machines that seem to be the most popular DIY conversions, the GO704, and um, you know, there's a couple of other machines that are sold in Europe that look very much like this. The Pre Precision Matthews is a great machine. I really like it, um, and it's it's typical for what you might see uh, on a DIY conversion. The baseline for the buy is a little harder to come up with. These small, inexpensive CNC machines that are ready to go are not, you know nearly uh, as well known as the, the manual machines. Uh, I went with a machine uh, from a, an importer called Seal America. This is the X4 milling machine. Um, a lot of people, when they think of ready to go CNC, they think of Tormach. I did not use Tormach because of the price point. I think the price point at which you're at to get into a Tormach, I think is uh, too far away from the, the money that your typical DIY person wants to spend. So I found this and I think this seal machine is actually very typical of uh, the ready to go factory built um, CNC options in this price class. But I've, I've traded emails and phone calls with the importer for these machines 
I think they have good uh, customer support. There's a phone number you can call, people you can talk to, email address, the, the distributors on the west coast of uh, the United States. So this was the baseline for buy. Fairly generous XYZ travels. This machine comes with a 5,000 RPM spindle, runs on 220 volt single phase, has a central lube system. You're going to spend around $6,500 on this machine. So here's the cost comparison, and I won't run into the details, but we have three columns. I have, you know, my best estimate on what it would cost to put the CLX4, you know, in your, your basement or your garage or your workshop. And uh, then beside it, I have two options for the DIY build. So let me talk about that. The PM25MV premium build, this is assuming, you know, you want to use a high-speed motion control board. This build is using, you know, really good closed loop steppers or maybe even servos. You know, we figured, uh, you know, $600, you should be able to get the really good stuff for that. This machine has the upgraded spindle bearings. This build, you know, you're going to up, upgrade the spindle motor. Uh, you know, something with more RPM, more wattage, more power. This machine has a central lube system on it. Now next to it is what I call the budget build. So this is your bare bones machine. This is like what I think, you know, the cheapest way, least expensive way to get into a CNC mill. This machine is going to run off a parallel port. You're going to use really inexpensive open loop steppers. I figured $300 for the motors and the drives. I don't think you can get into motors and drives for a machine of this size for less money than that. Uh, this build assumes you're going to have a PC, a free PC available to use. This build is using the stock spindle and motor. And as you can see, here's the price comparison. So you buy the seal, ready to go. Uh, nice, you know, option there. About $7,600, $7,700. You do your premium build on your PM25. You're, sprob you're probably going to spend around five grand. Go with your budget build. You're around $3,000, maybe $3,100. So there, I think, these are very reasonable uh, estimates on what you would spend for your ready-to-go machine, uh, your premium DIY build, or your budget build. So in summary, it is definitely cheaper to do it yourself than to buy. That is a fact. I am going to estimate that most people are going to spend around $4,000 on their DIY build, and naturally, if you already have the, the base milling machine, you know, these numbers look different, but assuming that you're going to buy everything, you're, you're probably going to spend around four grand on your DIY build. It is absolutely positively going to take more time and patience to get your DIY build up and running. Um, you need to keep that in mind because, you know, your time is definitely worth something. But if you enjoy the project and you enjoy the challenge, then, you know, that's going to be a great time. If you don't like that kind of stuff and you're looking at it like it's work, then, you know, that's definitely uh, uh, not going to work in the favor of doing a DIY. Maybe you're more of a, a buy it ready to go type of person. The buy, the factory built CNC machine, in my opinion, based on my experience, I think is going to have a slightly better spindle than your DIY conversion. And the reason being, the factory built machine comes from the factory intended to run at higher RPM. So the spindle is going to be balanced a little bit better. Uh, it's probably going to come from the factory with better bearings in it. Um, it may be machined a little bit more you know, accurately. Maybe the spindle has less TIR in it. I'm, I'm kind of making that assumption. Um, so I think your factory built machine is going to have a better spindle. Also, something to consider, your factory built CNC machines do not have a quill. Typically, uh, the quill is good if you're using the machine like a drill press, but the quill is also a source of uh, backlash and um, some extra movement that you don't really want in a CNC conversion. So factory built CNC, probably going to have a better spindle. Uh, but as you can see from the specs, your DIY CNC conversion is probably going to have a bigger table, probably going to have more X, Y, Z travel. And that's really nice. You know, your, the machine you have is never as big as the, the machine you need. So you want to maximize your travels. It just makes life easier. Um, so I think your DIY build is going to give you a machine with, you know, dollar for dollar, a machine with more travel and XYZ. So there you go. There's the summary. 
as you can see, um, depending on who you are and what you want, you may be better off buying a factory built machine or you may be better off building your own. Um, different options for everybody. It's definitely a lot of fun to build your own CNC, very rewarding. And yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff with your own CNC machine. I am amazed every time I make something on one of my CNC conversions, how well it works and how nice the parts uh, come out. But, you know, you have to temper your expectations. You could, you could never compare a DIY machine that you built in your garage uh, to something you would find in a, you know, a professional machine shop. When you see the videos online, you know, machines running, uh, you know, extremely high feed rates, extremely high RPMs, you know, beautiful finishes, um, just ripping through material like it's butter. You're not going to do that on your DIY build. But, you know, you can definitely, you know, make some really nice parts. So there you go. I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching. Uh, please be safe as you're working on your projects. And um, if you like my videos, please, um, you know, subscribe to my channel. And, um, you know, I'll try to put more interesting content up there as soon as I can. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.